Rua. Bom dia, Portugal. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings a bell. Will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers. Hola, bon dia, alegria, Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal show, live stream and podcast, just as Mrs. M is bursting into the room. What's going on, Mrs. M? Oh, little, little caddy boy, um, <laughs> Oliver, has got rid of his splinters. He had a, he had a what, a wrestling match with a thistle bush yesterday, or a hedgehog? Or a hedgehog. Okay, right. Living the dream here, cats wrestling with um, hedgehogs or thistle bushes and uh, car inspections. Wow, car inspection this morning. Good luck with that. Busort, amigo, uh, by Randy. And oh, coffee would be great, Mrs. M. Um, and um, bon dia from Evra, from Anna Swede in Portugal, in Evra. Uh, this morning. Now, uh, ordinarily, I would do the God's Squad tip of the day. I would give uh, James's greeting and mindful meme and so on. But we're going to have to wait. I think we're going to be doing that in the last half hour of the show today because we have a packed, eye-wateringly packed show this morning with uh, Jackie joining us from Expats Portugal in just a moment. Uh, we'll have uh, Bobby joining us this morning because we have episode number two of The Englishman and the Irishman Exploring Portugal. This time... The Englishman and the Irishman ride a tuk-tuk to a convent and meet two Templar knights from Birmingham. And yes, of course, that will be the Tamar episode. And we can play Spot the Gumpers as well. Who's that in these in this uh, lovely still from the video here? We'll come back to that and we'll chat with Bobby about uh, his progress at Herdad de Mayo as well. Things really happening on the ground. Do you remember we did an outside broadcast from there a few months ago? And typically uh, with building projects, nothing seems to happen for a while. And then suddenly it's all hands to the pump and things start coming out of the ground and it gets very exciting. And we've got the pictures to prove it from Bobby when we see him at around a quarter to this morning. Paul Reese joins us. So much to talk about with uh, Paul Reese. Not, uh, no, um, what do I mean? No less, no, not more. No, um, certainly including, there we go, Northern Soul and Southern Comfort, uh, his most recent article in the Portugal resident. I thought I had the best column in the Portugal resident. Turns out it might be Paul, actually. A magnificent article there, uh, Northern Soul and Southern Comfort. Uh, the man is a great writer and, of course, a great advocate, champion of the central Portugal area where he is refurbing property to a high standard and popularizing that part of the country. This, I believe, is one of his. Yeah, this is available. He can introduce you to this property in central Portugal. Look at that beauty, that opulent beauty right there. So looking forward to talking to Paul a little bit later on. And then, of course, Heather Binder joins us from Boots on the Ground from 9.30 uh, with an interesting listing to share. And, of course, always fun getting an update and having a catch up with Heather Binder of Boots on the Ground. Let's give her a nice big round of applause because she's here already. It's Jackie. Good morning to you, Jackie. Hola, bon dia, alegria. Hola, bon dia. <laughs> How's your morning going? Pretty good. Really very busy. Eye-wateringly busy. So much to pack in this morning. Who doesn't like to pack a lot in first thing in the morning? That is what we're doing. And delighted to welcome you, our first guest this morning. How is Kashgaish this morning? It's perfect. It's beautiful. We're having a great day. Um, and it's just a great place to drive around. Um, and that's why I'm here this morning. A great place to drive around, well, especially today or just generally speaking? It's just generally speaking. I mean, I, I'm close to Ginchu Beach. Oh, and nice. so just driving along Ginchu can be an, a spectacular 
yeah. experience, especially as you're driving, you could see the westernmost point of Europe, which is Cabo de Roca. Yes, de Roca. yes, mm -hmm. amazing. Okay, yeah, and that will be so, a beautiful drive today. Well, imagine you can see it as you're driving along the coast. Beautiful, fantastic. Well, isn't it? We live for the days like this, don't we? You, it sounds like you've got a nice, bright, sunny one there in Kashgar. Similar here, a little bit overcast at the moment, but we'll be there having a lovely time at the meetup. Where today, Jackie, we're celebrating T Duck has been in Portugal for three years today, and oh. he and Mrs. Duck celebrating 33 years of marriage as well today, isn't it? Oh one? my gosh, so that is forward. so so great. One time I told somebody how long I've known my husband. I said, you know, I haven't been on a date, and I gave the date, which is I know you know you're really old when you don't even want to tell the date of when you met your husband, <laughs> but but I said, yeah, I haven't been on a date since da, 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 da. He goes, long, dry spell. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> that does not help. Can't be friends so anymore. Just, <laughs> like, make comments like that. <laughs> yeah, I've decided just not to share that date anymore. Yeah. But... Oh, well, that's, there's something really lovely about that as well, isn't there? Perhaps not in the modern world of, of loose morals. But, I mean, that's a beautiful <laughs> thing, an absolutely beautiful thing to be, to be with one person and so committed. Um, for so long. I think that's quite an achievement and it's something to be celebrated. I I think it is. And, you yeah. know, marriage has its ups, its downs, you know. It it's, it's ins and outs. Yes, yeah. that's right. And um, long and may it continue. It, Happiness yeah. and fulfillment for all who are engaged, uh, not engaged to be married, but engaged in marriage, uh, we could say, couldn't we? It's, it's a very special thing, very special thing. So well and, done, you. And, and oh. Mr. <laughs> You know, it, I, I admire people. I think you're right. I never really gave it much thought, but you go through some great times. You go through dark times. It's how you get through them. And it's, you can't have one without the other, it would, it would appear as well, right? I, I would agree. I yes. would agree. And life is just like that. And having a partner that helps you through those, you know, not so great days. In your cousin yeah. Mento. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well done, Mr. and Mrs. T Mr. and Mrs. Duck. Oh, I was going to say Mr. and Mrs. T Duck. Mr. and Mrs. Duck, 33. It's all about threes. Been in Portugal for three years and celebrating um, three. Uh, so you've yeah, been in Portugal for three years and 33 years of marriage as well. Try, look at this. Try dating your spouse. How about that? Date you night. know, that's what we do every Friday night, all through hey. our children's lives. Yep. yep, we've always said uh, Friday is date night, and we would have cocktails and hors d'oeuvres, and we would, we would say, unless you're, you've stopped breathing or you're bleeding, you're not allowed to interrupt our date night. We used Very to like, good. The old cowboy hat on the door handle. I like it. I like <laughs> your husband's going, no, this is your husband. No, this one. <laughs> yeah, there he is on Friday night. <laughs> That was that was that was our our, our every Friday night. Very and good. Was, and it was a great practice, you know, like yoga and meditation. I think it was a great marriage practice to date. Oh, your so you husband. didn't do yoga and meditation on your date night? No, no. Okay. Unless, the kids, unless the kids burst in. What are you doing? Uh yoga, go away. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jackie, no. what's going on? Expats mm. Portugal. Uh, here we are. We're looking at the website now. And it was fantastic last week, wasn't it, to uh, be in the company of Philomena. Yeah. Yeah, she did a great job. She's superb. Uh, great job with her. That was last week's webinar. This week, we are talking to the ACP and looking at the driving license exchange, the hot topic for people who are arriving in Portugal. Uh, people like uh, Mr... Uh, Smith here, Tom Smith is with us, um, probably not exchanging the driving license on this trip, but may well be at some point. Look at these lovely pictures from uh, Tom flying in to uh, Portugal. Wow. Great when you can take that picture there. Fabulous picture. Wow. And uh, this morning, we know this this uh, landmark, don't we, in the capital as well, Marcus de Pombal, uh, round about there. So welcome, Tom Smith. Fantastic. Uh, having you in the country, absolutely wonderful. So well done. And you're on your way to the San Martino de Porto meetup this lunchtime, so see you there. So what can we expect from the ACP tomorrow night? You know, this is one that, of all the things that are consultations, we really don't discuss a lot, and yet it's incredibly important. So exchanging of the license. Now, 
I don't know much. I and maybe somebody could um, on your audience could give me more information. That's actually the point is that mm. we don't have the information. So that's why we're doing this tomorrow. But there are things I heard kind of in the rumor mill that if you have been here a specific amount of time in Portugal, and let's say you have a car and your car is insured, and you haven't, and you're you're in an accident. Well, if you haven't exchanged your license, then your car insurance doesn't have to pay up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's one of the things I heard. So I, that's one thing I hope to find out tomorrow night. The other thing is that you do have to exchange your license, and you're given a paper license here mm -hmm. until your real license comes. But unfortunately, that paper license that you get here is only good for Portugal. So if I go back to the States, I can't drive during that right. particular transition. So mm. that's another question I'm going to have tomorrow. So there's so much. I mean, there's so much to know. Yes. And uh, we, we don't know the answers, do we? And I never have with this sort of thing because it varies no. from person to person. It varies on your age. And you don't want to be voiding your insurance and you don't want to find yourself compromised when you fly back home. So we'll get the answers yeah. from ACP tomorrow yeah. evening. Excellent. Excellent. Um, anything else happening over at uh, Expats Portugal? I think for tomorrow night that we're going to have the dream team as always. Oh, so, yes. Always yeah. great fun. Yeah. So, if anyone's got a cultural question for them, um, I'd be very glad uh, to put that to the Dream Team tomorrow night. Great session. Lots of fun uh, with all those um, professionals that help you move to Portugal. The next uh, online meetup with uh, Conk and Honey, uh, that I think you had one last Saturday, didn't you? And yes, the next yes. coming up on May the 4th. That's my wedding anniversary. And I think ah. yeah, we'll have been married uh, 11 years. Um, wow. ne never mind 33 years or 53 years. We'll have been married... For, uh, 11 years, 53 years in June for the Richardses. Goodbye in Yorkshire, ta. I wonder what he means with that. Well, anyway, say goodbye to Yorkshire and now living in the Algarve. We spoke to Paul Richards yesterday. So, yes, 4th of May is the next social wow. with the wonderful Hank and Connie. What are those? What, what's the format of those, those events, uh, Jackie? Generally, we break out into groups. And right. what I like about doing the groups is that instead of, like, 20 or 30 people there's only five or six of us at a time having conversations and it gets it's a much more intimate feel and then we'll kind of come up in, again as a larger group but mm. we just keep breaking out and what happens is the people keep changing with each breakout so you really get an opportunity to meet people nice okay who doesn't yeah. like an intimate feel on a saturday yeah. night uh yeah. very good uh, we have um, also birthday greetings for diane what a beautiful day to celebrate diane's birthday the, the sun's come out with all of these wonderful celebrations today that's absolutely wonderful good to see you sarah yearman and pinky's in as well we had uh bon dia from uh, anna in evera pinky uh good morning to you bon dia from a beautiful and sunny miranda de corvo sunshine all over the country fantastic lovely yeah, day you. Uh, to celebrate Diane's birthday, of course, and send our love from the Gumpers to Diane, if you will. Tom Smith in the country, that's why the sun's out as well. Fun-filled day of lawn maintenance today. People living the dream today. There's car inspections and people mowing their lawns. Does it get any better than this, Jackie? You know, no news is good news, and <laughs> I think you're right. I think if Wow. You know, nothing bad is happening, then everything good is. Yes, that's what so. we're looking at it. Well, you're trimming the lawn there. Yeah, good luck with the car inspection today. Gumpers coming to each other's support and aid as well there. Uh, Jim White is also in from Porto. Bon dia. Doros from Jim. Good morning to you, Jim. Lovely. Always lovely to see you on the screen here. Ocean Dweller. It was easy getting my driver's license in Madeira. I've heard that Madeira is a piece of cake. Very good. That's just British baking joke there. Very, very yeah. excellent. Well done, Pete. Pete is on form this morning. Bon dia, Portugal, from Joel de Nort. And um, it was easy getting the driver's license for Aviva. Uh, Michael Barton, however, is looking forward to tomorrow's webinar. We have the same driver's license question, so let's get those answered with the ACP tomorrow. Uh, no problem for Aviva. What's your secret? I just take all the insurances and pay for them when I rent a car in the US. Okay, good. And by Randy, sounds like you've got it sussed, Solar Life Portugal. Recon, you bust the tractor on purpose. What's that? I must have missed a, a little bit of information there, some key information about Pete and his tractor. Morning, beautiful people from Owen. 
And uh, I won't make it to the Dream Team as I'm going to be mm. doing a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I will be at the, yes, the Luge, a Stadio de Luge for the Benfica Marseille match. Well, that's some good timing. Bobby O'Reilly is joining us just a moment. He's quite happy about that as well. A hump day, a bit of paddle at 13.30 to be precise, and garden work later. Oh, Isn't it lovely? Okay. The simplicity okay. of life here in Portugal. Bolo Madeira. There's no need for that sort of language. Well, Jackie, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, for joining us this morning. We'll be with you tomorrow night and the ACP for the big driving license webinar tomorrow. So have a beautiful day in Qashqai. You too. Bye. All right. Ciao, ciao. Thank you for being here. There she goes. Let's keep that applause going and bring Mr. O'Reilly onto the screen. Oh, there you are. How are you? Hola, bon dia. Hola, bon dia. Todo. That brought some, uh, some light to your face there, hearing about uh, Mr. Smith going to the Luge, uh, Stadio de Luge there. What's going on uh, with this fixture here, Bobby? Is it important? That's your way, Felic. Um, <laughs> going on form, uh, hopefully Benfica will, will win, but um, they just got bet by Sporting in a fantastic uh, game last week. Right. Last, first first minute goal and a 92-minute goal. Oh, uh, exciting stuff. Benfica, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and then they had... Sporting, I just bet them for the the Tassa de Portugal the week before in Benfica as well. So it was, um, how would you say, disappointing for Benfica fans. But right. uh, tonight, so it, it's Marseille. Yeah, so I'll be there. You will be there. Okay, cheering and having a great time there. Last time we spoke to you, um, you were off the booze and yeah. rapidly losing weight. If I remember rightly, seven kilos in five weeks. How's that going? Ten. Ten now, good man. Excellent stuff. Yes, very good. And how are you feeling? Good. Feel great. Um, lighter. <laughs> Clothes yeah. started to fit me on the way back down. You know that kind of way, sort of yeah. um, stuff that I had to sort of put aside for a while. Um, yeah. Put back into. So it's great. Excellent, excellent. Well, well done. Uh, always very satisfying, isn't it? Uh, when uh, we're shedding the weight and, and feeling uh, healthier. Um, and great news uh, from Herdar de Mayo as well, right? Yeah, yeah, we're flying. Um, uh, we have, uh, I suppose, I think around 50 houses already started and um, already starting to work on the first floors in the top floor. Yeah. Of some of them already so we're pouring we're pouring the the roof of the first house yesterday fabulous so, okay well I've, you sent me some video um mm. so we can have a look we, we we've um had a lot of fun uh, broadcasting from the marketing suite there south of the river of course uh, in lisbon and this remarkable development that you're creating there's a little bit different in the portuguese real estate scene so let's have a look at a little bit of uh, video and some stills from the site as well Is it me, or did they just start getting busy when you started filming? No, actually, that's a slow. Uh, I remember one day looking up and going, where the hell is everyone? Because we've got, <laughs> we've got 70 basements. Yes. And, um, we have to, the way we have to build it, we have to sort of build two houses, leave two houses, build two houses. All and right. Then, then you backfill. Once you've got um, the basements built, you can backfill them, and then you can dig the, the ones in the middle, if you like. But... Yeah. I was going, where is everyone? And they're all in the holes, you know. So <laughs> from from Martin's week. Yeah, so every now and again I go for a little walk up the road where everyone is. Yeah. Look busy, the boss is here. <laughs> and it's like being a kid, isn't it? You know, when you're a kid and you're playing with your toys in, in the sandpit and you've got your diggers and stuff like that. You've got that as a grown-up in real life there, haven't you? With little tonka toys yeah, moving yeah. around the side. 
it's great to see something uh, happen that you, it was my concept, if you know what I mean, the, the yeah. me and a few others, if you like it, but, but it was, if you like, I started the idea, if you know what I mean, and then when you see it actually coming out of the ground and it's it's coming to life, it's a fantastic feeling to see it. I bet, uh, I bet, yeah. Uh, been a big learning curve with the size of this uh, development, but um, it's just fantastic to see it, it really is. Yes. Like that, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the congrats coming in as well. Out of the ground, Bobby. That's always cause for a celebration. Well done, mate. He's off the booze at the moment. Looking good, Bobby. Keep up the good work. You'll have a drink when this is topped out, though, won't you? Don't know. Let's really? See. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, a little bit more video then. Let's have a look at another part of the site. Well, who doesn't like a big pump first thing in the morning? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's exciting. Okay. And a, and a few more, a few more stills as well from the side. Look at this. It must that's be tough. it must be amazing. Oh, and the graffiti artists have been already. No, that that's an old one. Actually, we have to build oh. a new wall in front of this as well. So okay. this is the wall that's uh, at the end of the, the side of the building, but we have to put a new a new wall between us and that as well. Oh, okay. They'll be immortalized then, won't it? That's Actually, it. to get the heights even, like we're about another two meters up. We have to come up about two meters up that wall. Oh, really? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. For for ground level. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, it's vast, isn't it? It's, you must be so exciting um, being being involved in this. How many men are on that? Uh, there's about 50, 60 at the minute. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Incredible. Um, and like it's the process is flying it because. Yeah they're not waiting for anything to, to set or dry because we've got so much to do. We've got two separate crews, um, two separate concrete and steel crews working one end each, basically working towards the middle. So, oh, I see. Is it a race? Have you well, incentivized them? Well, you're, able, you're able to judge one against the other. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> that's In a good the same. Yeah, that's right. Like Aldi, you know? yeah, you're not working as fast as the other guys, are you? What's going on here? Brilliant. Um, no, both great, to be honest. The both, both teams are very good, and I'm very, very happy with the crew we have. They're fantastic. Well, on that note, quick question for Bobby. How does he cope with Portuguese lunchtimes? Anything from an hour to four hours, and always three courses with wine and coffee. Are your crew doing that as well? No, oh, they're on price. <laughs> okay wow all right so there you go there's the answer to your question um you've obviously dealt with that before bobby and you created mm. a different kind of contract for production here exactly no no it's uh it's it's basically up to them how long they take now they have obviously uh, targets to hit yeah but they're way ahead of them like we hope to have all the um structure finished mm. within the next three months everything the whole Incredible. Country. Well, we look forward to being back there and uh, broadcasting from the site. How exciting will that be? And uh, you're talking about A and B crews, which sounds a little bit like film production, which leads very nicely um, into the, the premiere of our next movie. Here we are, Bobby. Look, uh, an Englishman and an Irishman explore Portugal. The Tuk Tuk ride to meet two Templar Knights from Birmingham um, yeah. and popping, popping into the convoy which I don't know if that's a good thing to say or not. Um, there's, some, there's some stills here uh, from the movie. Um, naked dummies in the window. There's so much going on um, in this episode there here. There's a lot of dummies me. the other side of that window as well. <laughs> <laughs> there's two more. <laughs> Having a couple of connectors. Um, yeah. And um, we also um, had um, a couple of gumpers. Spot the gumpers here. Who's that? Who are the lovely ladies there? with the um, Gumper, well, the Templar Knights, the Gumper Templar Knights from Birmingham. It's uh, it's really unusual, isn't it, when you discover the history behind the Templar Knights? And we just, we met two from Birmingham um, yeah. in the United Kingdom. What are your uh, outstanding memories uh, from the production of, of this particular one, which premieres next Saturday evening? Uh, actually, it was, it was my first time in Tomar. Oh, um, yes, of course it was, yeah. And... Um, Remember we were singing that the one man went to Mar. One right? man went to Mar. Yeah, which was really lost on Pedro, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, it was the first time there, and it was a very nice town. Um, yeah. I loved the bakery part of it as well. I thought the bakery was it was cool. The way you could see everything going on. 
And yeah. then we got those um, nice little uh, treats at the door. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the sort of experience of, of even going up to the convent or with the Tuk Tuk, the whole, it's just a nice town. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think a, a lot of the time in places like this are depending on the people that you're with as well. Yep. You know, what you're doing there. Like, you can go there and sit in a, an Airbnb or a hotel and not see too much or understand too much, but getting the information off the boys, because the, the two guys, the two Templar Knights, had lots of uh, facts and, and sort of fun facts as well as normal facts about the area as well. So that sort of helped make it a lot more enjoyable as well. So it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and the um, Tuk Tuk driver, yeah. one of the strange facts that came up, he was talking about Umberto Eco, um, I believe, visiting uh, Portugal and describing uh, Tomar as the belly button of the world yeah. and these are the sort of facts that come up aren't they when we start getting into conversations with people there he is luis yeah. uh, tuk tuk driver what a legend um yeah, there. Cool. You, yeah if you ever get the chance to get a, a, a ride with him up to the convent um it's probably best to get a tuk tuk isn't it um yeah. which was we have to say looking at the uh, still from the movie there which is our cover article going down the cobbled streets of tuk tuk it was uh, good that we didn't take our connectors with us on that journey i think yeah, it was like the Batmobile, I think. Uh, he yeah. flew, you know. So, yeah. 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 Look at your in fact, he had the right, he had the right T-shirt on. We're piecing it together here. Yeah. He does think it's the Batmobile, uh, young young Luis there. Okay, and um, we are headed towards Braga. Fingers crossed then for second week of May. Blimey, yeah. that's coming quick. That's just a month away now. So uh, next filming in Braga when the Englishman and the Irishman explore a bit more of Portugal, the food... The wine, the, the boot. Oh, well, some of us will. <laughs> sorry. Um, we'll be having a glass of wine up there as well. The culture, meeting interesting characters like uh, as has become our habit um, with um, our trips away. So if you're a gumper who wants to join us and, and be, in, be in the movie as well, you're very welcome. What is that a, a, a tiny little espresso mug you're drinking out of there? Yeah. I have my, what is that? New York. I got it in New York. Actually, it fits the size of the coffee I like perfectly. So okay. it's like a sort of a... Double espresso size. So this is my normal. I have two of them. I got them in New York. Cool. It's so un-American, though. I mean, what comes to mind is the Pogues and the and the, the boys of the NYPD yeah, yeah. choir. Um, but I can't. I can't. Oh, oh, maybe that's an American espresso cup. So it's still bigger than a normal one, but it's not as big as the mugs you see coming from. The exactly. States. Yeah. 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 All right. So, Herr Dad de Mayer, then you're going to be going on to site presumably today. What's 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 planned for the next few days and, and week or so on site there? It's more of the same for now. Um, yeah. Basically, um, we're it's all it's all been concrete and steel up to now, and that's what's going to happen up for the next couple of months. Uh, lining yeah. up all the the separate, how would you say, divisions of work that has been done—the bricks, the windows, the tiles, all that kind of stuff has been done. Mm. Like, to be honest, I've got very little to do except just look at them. I'm, I'm not—I don't manage the the, the uh, construction side of it at all. So for oh. me, it's even it's like hands free. Just look at it. That's it. Uh, I have very little to do with maybe when it comes to the, the smart home side of it, um, which we're still, let's say, developing, coming up with new ideas, new technologies all the time. Yeah. Um, I'm heavily involved in that side of it at the moment for the end user and the crazy things that are coming up with. It's just fantastic. Like, you oh, know, tell us a bit more before you go then about that. What's smart about these smart homes? So typically people think of smart homes as in like open and closing your curtains and turning and dimming your lights. <laughs> That kind of stuff. Yes. What actually this house will do, it it regulates um, and in real time shows you the the the, um, the usage to production and um, the cost of your utility. So we look at the likes of electricity, um, water, and uh, comfort as well with the house. So the house will have a central computer in it that will allow you to sort of upgrade the house yourself to all the little demotic things, including opening and closing the curtains, different colors of lights and turning on your music, turn it down, all that kind of stuff uh, is, is, that's the basic stuff. But the, um, how would you say, the real genius behind this house, for example, is that you know yourself, you have solar panels and you have batteries and what the computer will work out, what's the cost of your usage at the moment yeah. and what you're drawing and when is it better to take electricity from the grid versus generating it from solar and so on or it and also it 
it um, coordinates the temperature, the humidity, everything in your house, even the cleanliness of the air with HEPA filters and so on. Mm. So it's a real smart home in the sense that it has a computer that's actually working um, the interior comfort and air flows, et cetera, as well of the house. And um, But also you can add on all these other magic things such as the security uh, system, which is a closed circuit system. You, uh, as a standard, you drive up to the house and recognize your car, it opens the garage, you drive in, it turns on the light, you walk up the stairs, it turns it off, it closes the gate, etc. Gotcha. Right. But um, it's, it's the managing the cost of living here uh, is what the whole thing, and the comfort part of it. Because um, a lot of people, especially with these houses, have big basements as well. And um, when you have a basement that's in the ground, sometimes you have issues with humidity and so on and so forth, regardless of what you do. So we have developed a system that basically takes care of all the humidity and so on through the house as well. So very smart, comfortable. Um, basically, there's nothing you can't do with this house if you want to. Well, so that's going to be of big interest, isn't it, to some foreign uh, buyers, investors. I have heard about Americans actually fainting whenever you just say black mold. So that's going to come as a great, great comfort to some people, I think, who are, are concerned about these sorts of issues, the management of that. That is that is real progress, I think, in Portuguese uh, housing stock building. So congratulations on that, Bobby. Have a great day. Um, Philomena congratulating us on our next program, the episode two there. Carl, Bobby there from Philomena. Good morning to you. Hola, bom dia, alegria to you. Igual meant to you, Philomena. And maybe we'll see you soon, if not in Braga, then somewhere else. Have a great day, Bobby. Thanks for popping in. Take care. All right. Take care. Keep up the great work as well. Cheers, mate. Bye for now. And uh, let's bring Paul onto the screen. Keep that applause going and bring Mr. Paul Reese onto the screen. <laughs> That's it. Clap along. Clapping Bobby, not myself. Oh, I say. OK, nice round of applause for Bobby. He likes a warm hand on his opening, you know. Um, right. Uh, how are you, Paul, in central Portugal, I'm guessing? And a good pump in the morning. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I like it. And my team mug again. If you fill that up with, with espresso, I mean, no wonder the guy talks the speed he does. Jeez. Uh, yeah, and builds 80 houses before breakfast. <laughs> on a schedule. Bon dia todos from Raj's Indian family in Portugal. Well, lovely to see you here, Raj's Indian family in Portugal. I think that's a new name for the screen. Now, you're pretty prolific yourself there. I mean, we're in the company of giants uh, this morning um, with that building that's going on south of the river. And you, Paul, with your incredible output up there, connecting people. People with opulent beauty like this um that's one of uh, one of the discoveries you've made in central portugal i believe and this talking about millions of development up there this sounds very impressive as well central portugal development land private sale we might talk about that this morning um also i don't know what order you want to do these in but just having a little look at your output recently we're seeing this as well um and like me you're not too bothered i think about uh, the rise of shake here in portugal it's upsetting some people in the same way that black mold can put an american off coming to portugal <laughs> so could so could shake and we think that's a bit unfounded, don't we? I think you, you're quoted here. An opposition party led by a stuffed donkey would have done well in the last election as the ruling socialist kleptocracy had been so deeply discredited by scandal after scandal. Should we start there? You're not too bothered then about the rise of Chega in Portugal? No, I, th I think they'll come and go. The, these right-wing parties appeal to the sort of baser instincts, sadly. Yes. <clears throat> and I think if they're faced with a weak opposition then they rise and rise like they've done in holland um yes. but uh, if it shakes the rest of the system into actually performing a bit better um i think they're a good catalyst um and it has disrupted uh, decades of of ps psd little pendulum swings back and forwards so it's uh i quite like the disruption i like disruption anyway uh, i don't I don't see Portugal becoming a right-wing um, country. Yeah, no, same here. I mean, you know, we thank goodness for democracy. On the one hand, democracy creates a result like that, doesn't it? Where pe you, you, you've you blessed with a golden halo this morning, Paul. I, don't, I think the sun's just, just moving. Let me move around. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yes. I mean, you know, that's the thing. You can't dislike democracy when it gives you the result you don't like. 
<laughs> but also the beauty of democracy is it means that any ideas that Shaker have will have to go through the due process. Yeah. It's not just because they've suddenly been elected in, in larger numbers, they suddenly get all their wishes granted. It doesn't work like that here, does it? No, and I'm, yeah, absolutely right. You know, the, um, if you look through their, their manifesto, the, the media obviously concentrated on the, their desire to poison gypsies and spear babies from the wrong way. <laughs> Just to uh, point out that is not actually Paul is making a point, a point about their extremism here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so, some of the stuff is good practical uh, stuff. You know, it's mm. developing the economy along along pretty conservative capital C lines. So yeah. Yeah. to be applauded, anything that um, reduces the insanity of decades of layers and upon layers of bureaucracy is a good is a good thing but again if that if that kicks the ruling party into into streamlining stuff that we have to deal with all well and good but the, absolutely uh, absolutely yeah. and it makes you and me even having this conversation far-right extremists of course yeah absolutely i i mean i'm an unapologetic capitalist i came from how dare you? I came, How dare you? I came from a background of of um, my father ran a group of businesses, so I kind of was brought up in that way of thinking. Mm. Uh, having said that, it's fine. I had a conversation yesterday with one of our investors. And it's interesting, intelligent guy, and we were talking about taxation, and I said, "Yeah, but you can spend your life avoiding." taxation legally but countries need tax you know yeah. so somebody's got to pay it you can't just leave it to business or you can't just leave it to the proletariat <laughs> you know it's, the proletariat. we've got to have a, a health service and an education service and um, armed forces sadly you know so someone's got to pay for the the stuff all around us and which was I wouldn't say grudgingly acknowledged, but you know it is. I mean, I can't, I can't believe the political swings in this conversation. Now you're a communist, <laughs> socialist, socialist leanings. You know, socialist leanings. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, everyone goes on about dull scroungers. There's a massive headline in the Daily Mail this morning of of some. It seems to be a couple in Wood Green in London who've managed to nick fifty six million from the. Um, but by in, inventing claimants. How very enterprising. I mean, it's an incredible enterprise. <laughs> Firstly, they got caught, but mainly because they went on social media bragging about how much money they had. It was pretty bloody yeah. stupid. It went to their heads. It clearly yeah. went, it's typical nouveau riche, right? It went it went to their heads. But well, I do I do I do believe in a, a safety net for those that um can't uh, you know, perform as the rest of us do as, as good little taxpayers. Um, but that it's when that drifts over into malingering, you know, that the, the, there's got to be checks and balances. So, absolutely um, right. And, and, and interestingly, the, the, the so called extreme and far right parties that have, have come to some sort of prominence in Portugal recently are asking for uh, fairer taxation, I think, aren't they? They're, they're, they're not trying to not pay tax they want a system i guess that might encourage people to be a little bit more um honest you might say about tax less tax and better spent tax would is not a bad policy is it well I, i'm old enough to remember when thatcher got in and the and the top rate of tax was slashed dramatically i can't remember how many p in the pound but it it, it plunged and of course the tax take went up mm, interesting you know, but the Isle of White, Isle of White, Isle of Man manages on flat rate, twenty percent, where everyone pays the same. Um, and for those on low incomes, it's fair enough. For those on high incomes, it encourages them to be there. And yeah. and you know, the, the overall people then toe the line. It's if it goes up to you know forty eight percent plus super tax plus whatever, people then spend a lot of time with our well known tax advisors. Um, planning sorting out their estates rather than just getting on with life. 
Exactly. Well said. Some great observations there. So don't worry, folks. So this, um, I know it must be difficult looking at Portugal from afar and and seeing, you know, the, the rise of Shaker and so on. But let's, it's important to have these conversations and have uh, bright people like Paul giving you a little bit of extra insight on this. So let's move from politics into, you mentioned investment uh, and meeting up with investors. Is this the big, big deal on the table at the moment then for you? It, it's one of, I mean, in addition to my normal day to day, buying renovating and selling mm. i also get involved i spend about a day a week on what i call special projects mainly because people approach me that have substantial assets for sale in rural areas um, or are seeking something off market i had a long conversation this week with an overseas couple who are looking for a multi-million uh, property with certain characteristics uh, and they said that the thought of using estate agents fills them with fear I, I don't know what was in their in their background but and I kind of know stuff I, t I tend to know what's on the market and what's certainly what's good value and I'm happy to negotiate I like the negotiation side of it so this land near Coimbra uh, came up directly from the owner um, who's had little success with traditional estate agent, um, you know, postings, and is looking for an international buyer, basically. And Very we've, interesting. We've got two two from the UK now that are looking at it more closely. So, well, this is very exciting, Paul. It makes so much sense. Um, and and the the uh, development has been authorised, which is a great start. Care homes. That's also very interesting. I, I thought, you know, that we have to deal with this in some way, don't we, uh, for the future yeah. ageing population, people coming here to, to to grow old and have a nice retirement. So we've got care homes and 100 apartments, change of plan possible to senior residence, residences or apartments. So not yeah. unlike Steve, then, you are feeling this a silver tsunami thing and ahead of this curve. It is going to be very important, isn't it, to develop housing that is suitable for elders, uh, for the old and those who yeah. need care and and people who run to this fire to, to use another uh, Steve White expression I think w are onto something yeah I mean for decades Portugal had Monte Palaguerra which it still does in the Algarve which was um, a, a quite a good financial um, model for s senior care and mm. it, it it was for well-heeled middle-class retirees who'd probably emigrated here in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, lost a partner, had substantial assets and moved into Monte Palaguerra and enjoyed it very much. Mm. Um, the, then they came and went. Uh, there's another. There's one in Almond Seal called Savannah, I think, um, that was an enormous failure that sat empty for 20 years really uh, yeah uh, great plan at the time but it seemed that um coming here to retire at that age people preferred to stick to you know, the health system where they were being their family where they were etc there's it's one of those things that look good on paper but wasn't you know it didn't turn into a business i think now the corner's um, we've gone around the corner on that and um, there now seems to be some big developments that are based on international models that are, are now attracting uh, seniors I mean seniors a bit like Saga it's over 55 I think that, that to me is terrifying not what a terrifying <laughs> thought that is <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I look back to when I was that age I still was playing golf you know it's uh, yes. kind of, extraordinary so yeah i think the if you just look at the the demographics of the country like many european countries uh, perhaps markedly in portugal um the older getting older and, the, mm. and they're, they're staying alive longer and the young are still um leaving the country to seek opportunities elsewhere leaving a pretty serious uh, sort of actuarial problem right absolutely that's on the domestic front um but it, it's interesting also that most of the senior care provision seems to be for foreigners so it's br bringing in the the, sil the silver dollar um yeah.
and we'll we'll see how it goes. You know, we'll see see how it goes. But you think something has changed and something is changing compared to those visionary projects from the south? Yeah, I do. I, th I think the, the demographics. If you look at the baby boomers, um, and the the shift anyway of people coming to this country, um, I, I think if there is is provision for an age group even even higher than the current retirees or near retirees. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it's we'll see, but there's some serious serious money um, behind providing such facilities, and I think one of the problems has been that word facilities. You know that yes. uh, branding needs to be very very carefully done, so it's not like you're sort of moving into a old people's retirement home. I think it needs to be a bit more. Are you being served in Benny Hill rather than? <laughs> The, 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 yeah. the, the old Mr. Grace and um, oh, you know, Mr. Grace, God dear. scantily clad uh, nursing. Uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't be saying things like that. But uh, the point being is, it doesn't need to smell of disinfectant, does it? No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. the, the, and you know, I see the marketing now, and it's all it's all um, very good looking older people on bicycles and swimming, and um, it's all, all the yeah, all yeah, the they're, they're always running on a beach, aren't they? Or, you know, or eating salad, laughing at salads, those sort of pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so if anyone's interested then in getting involved in that, and it's, I mean, we're, we're, we're not talking about users or clients yet, are we? We're talking about people who want to be involved in investment. In, in the pro sort of project we're talking about, they should reach out and get in touch with you. And only, what, 10K, six miles away from a, a central Portugal city. That's got to be good as well. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's it's all in the um, all in the all in the location. So I'm right. just moving the car out of the sunlight. I might be able oh, to bless get you. OK, this could be interesting. Oh, that's bad. Let the handbrake off or, or, or are we actually driving? No, I've just got the handbrake off. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Very good. Um, that's that's. I'm so pleased to hear about that. And in many ways, you know, Portugal gets criticised, doesn't it? Or certainly, you know, some some of the um, Portuguese are aware of the precariousness of tourism as being um, a principal industry and, and form of income. Yeah, this, I think this is this is uh, this sort of thing. You know, people coming here, um, not. Um, I guess what. <laughs> Uh, th this wouldn't be the best sort of marketing, but their final tour, if you like. But, you know, um, retirement, <laughs> retirement tourism or coming to this country to yeah. enjoy the, the winter of your life. There are so, mu so many better ways of putting that, but it's it could be a very significant thing for the Portuguese economy, don't you think? Yeah, it could. I mean, it's another well-heeled demographic. And, it's, mm. um, and if it involves um, permanent residency rather than tourism... I mean, I, I think the cost of acquisition per tourist, if you like, um, yes. is significant. The cost of the cost of somebody to, to the state of someone moving here full time is just it, you're into cash positive pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. All good you, you, I mean, the, I think it's especially acute in the Algarve, where tourism it's really its only business. Um, there's there's okay, there's fruit production and and cork production, but the, the I think tourism is forty percent the Algarve's GDP. I mean, it's absolutely massive. Yeah. I still see moaning about it as well. There's a posting on Facebook this morning from Open Media doing another um, "Welcome to Portugal" or "Moving to Portugal," what it was, and the, the the first three comments are really cynical, saying, "Oh, we know, we know. Uh, from, from clearly from the surnames from non-Portuguese, saying, "Oh." <laughs> Last thing, yeah, you know, Portuguese can't afford a, afford a house. Uh, more people coming here. And I'm thinking, well, you haven't got anything else. Right. You've never developed another industry. There's been weak attempts at provide, uh, turning the Algarve into a tech hub, but Lisbon's streets ahead. Oh. Um, I, I, it's n NIMBYism writ large, I think. It's it would good. appear to be. It would appear to be. Open Media, of course, that is the uh, publication or the, yeah. the company we write for um, at the Portugal Resident. And um, mm. I, I, hopefully you and I will be invited to some of those events. Oh, we could have so much fun, couldn't we, you and me having a chat, if we're on some sort of discussion panel about Portugal. I'd love to, to meet you at such an well, event. Uh, th those events are not for the likes of us. Is that right? 
<laughs> no, they're, they're, they're for nice, nice, shiny people who want to know how to move here. Okay. Um, the right. last, the last Bruce Hawker would just sat in the back, back row, messing about, ask, asking about, <laughs> asking difficult questions. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, talking of which, uh, morning to you, Bruce, if you're watching. Um, the Portugal yep. resident, here you are writing about starting your own dynasty. This is another opportunity then. Um, what is this incredible place? Oh, uh, the, the house I wrote about, the one with the roof that you showed yeah, me. I, I, I'm looking at it. No one else is at the moment. I, I, I omitted <laughs> to putting it on the screen. There you go. That would help, wouldn't it? All right. Oh, that one, um, yeah, that's an inside shot of the of the, of the salon. That this house was um it's in Pedrogal Pequeno, which yeah. is on the far, far west of the Castelo Branco region. Look at it. And literally over the river here starts Leria region. Yeah. Uh, and this house was the son of the father. The the father in the eighteen early eighteen hundreds went to Brazil. Uh, made a packet, came back to his, his sort of home village as it was then, and built a house called Quinta de Rocha, which now is a boutique um, B and B. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the son went out to Brazil, presumably picking up the contacts his father had made, and came back well well loaded, mm -hmm. um, and thought, "Well, I'll build a house up the road." So literally three hundred meters up the road, he he built this house i'm not sure it has a name but the family's name is vidigal and right. Vidigal ended up owning most of the land around here and because they had money they dabbled in local politics um casa misericordia good works they gave the land for the cemetery um generally the, the square i'm sat in now actually is is lago d'angelo and enrique vidigal um so they were like a local local family made good so that was in the 1800s the family until now have owned it obviously Amazing. Obviously yeah. descent thereof. and i think used it you know, a couple of weeks in the summer they're lisboetas through and through now um and look lo and behold it came on the market so this is one of those family homes from a, a, a well-heeled family with a long history that suddenly comes on the open market for anyone to buy which is quite it's remarkable it is isn't it i mean why do they not want it anymore is it one of those sort of ups up and down stories of a family that were once wealthy and now need to liquidate i don't know that much about them i know more about the history than the current ones um yeah. i think I'd be hor horrified if um it was to be broadcast that they were skint yeah but it may be I mean, they really don't use this asset. They may have several houses. They may be multimillionaires or poor. I really don't know. But yeah. what I did house for the first time in its history um, is come on the market. And it's remarkable inside that an indoor bathroom was put in probably in the 70s. Um, well, that would have been posh, wouldn't it? That's about it. It's been well looked after. But is at the stage, if it's left for two or three years, it will start to, you know... It, you get one leak in the roof and it'll start ruining ceilings and things and you don't want to ruin that ceiling do you look at it it's absolutely beautiful yeah it is it was certainly built with no uh no problem with budget yeah no expense spared there and what's it on the market at do you know it's done at six hundred thousand. there's an eight uh hectare and a half at the back which is manageable yeah uh, so it's not like these houses that come with 50 hectares which is just a pain in the neck <laughs> yes but yeah, yeah. You know, with the rules now, you've got to clear all the scrub. You've got to keep it trim and tidy. And it, unless it's producing an income, and then you think, well, you've then got to pay somebody to do that anyway. So at, at best, you're breaking even on these estates. Well, I um, imagine you've 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 counselled and coached a few people to buy less land because when yeah. people come to Portugal, they say, "Yes, look at all this land I'm getting," and not realising what a pain in the neck it could be. Yeah, and it's it's a normal mindset from uh, crowded countries uk holland uh, come here and think oh i can i can buy 20 hectares and it's really cheap yeah uh, there's a cost every year yeah uh, yeah is it i mean i think it's good to own a bit of your view yeah uh, but if you if you check the zoning anyway um and find out that you that no one's going to build in your view that's w w why do you need to own it 
you know. The, yeah, and the novelty and grandeur of riding around on your ride on mower does wear off, doesn't it, after a couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah, it does does rather when the gearbox goes for the third time. Yeah. Yes. So who do you expect might buy somewhere like this? I mean, it's absolutely magnificent. It's not alone, is it? I mean, do, properties like this do come up all over Portugal with this kind of little quirky <laughs> niche that they, they occupy. There was another one nearby in Castanheira de Pera that was yeah. built in, in 1920. Um, and the family descendant actually was facing some serious medical bills for his wife. Uh, and they, I think, ran into financial trouble in that the property was auctioned and it failed at auction. It's an equal size house to this one. And it was sold at um, what I could say is a very attractive price. But again, that's... The, the point is that's the first time that house has been sold outside of the of the family so these ones are are coming up now um, for sale as to who would buy this um somebody clearly with an appreciation of history yeah uh, i'm actually listing this i do a newsletter each week to um interested parties it includes some fairly heavyweight investors um i'm proposing this um as a house that could have some uh i wouldn't say modernization but s some upgrade to provide at least a heating system yeah. um ca ca carefully recreated windows but still in wood but double glazed yeah. uh, and just bring it back you know it, it looks like it could do some teak oil in a few places as well so uh, couldn't we all couldn't we all though paul i mean yeah, yeah but, but yeah. In, in, indeed indeed as to who would buy it somebody with an adequate budget but yeah. um it's funny I, I had a inquiry from the algarve from a family that i've known for probably 20 years now um saying oh we think it may be about time to um to sort of basically sell up down there and move to the central region because um what they own down there now is worth several times more than they paid for it mm -hmm. Um, and they they would need you know, to um, reduce their capital gains bill if they're buying another primary residence. They, they need to spend quite a lot. Um, yeah. They're well, looking at properties in this this price range and upwards. So something like this plus a repair bill, you know, I would estimate two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. because there are barns out the back that need sorting out or turning into yoga studios. Doesn't doesn't matter, but very um, good. So, so who would buy it? Some, some, someone with the cash. You know? Yes. Well, yes, that's the short answer to that question. I think Heather Binder might buy this. She, I could see her in this drawing room here. And I was just wondering, looking at that picture there, that's not a TV at the back there. It's not like a Portuguese cafe, is it? That's not a Portuguese telly on the wall there showing the news. That wouldn't fit, would it, with the Rococo design here? I think it's just a rather splendid picture. I think um, it's a picture or a reflection. I can't quite see it. Yeah as you can heather joining us in just a moment a few more questions before you go then paul and enjoy yourself in central portugal thank you really appreciate you joining us this morning always fascinating talking to you no of problem. course um the proletariat pays taxes could be the definition i guess in of proletariat but very much looking forward to the progress of these facilities that's talking about the um the oldies um facilities here have you got a link uh, for the investment information how do people get on that uh, newsletter of yours paul do they go to rural-properties.com yeah and then a, a pop-up pops up and you okay. fill it you um you go on the mailing list and oh, i right. do a monthly newsletter i've got one coming out i'm writing it now at the moment uh now so that will go up late this week early next week all right it's, early, it's a sort of month of what i've been up to plus opportunities plus it's um just me rabbiting on because it's not public it's not a posting on on linkedin or something i can i can r ramble a bit and just paint a p paint a picture of what we're up to and you're not going to get sued by anyone and it's fantastic i mean it's it, it's your you, your sparkling wit will be evident i'm sure in your newsletter it'll be good fun to read as well uh, so there you go james we'll make sure you've got a link to that we can think of two huge retirement homes near us says pete over in fundal a bit further over to the west uh, to the east i beg your pardon 
um, of Portugal, one of which bankrupted five local businesses that are sitting empty and the scammers who set them up got away with nearly five million. My goodness. OK, well, these are the sort of stories we don't want to hear about retirement homes, but the timing will be right at some point. No yeah. question about that. Um, good morning, yeah. everyone from Gemini. I think this question is for you. Why is Fuzeta Algov so expensive? There are some houses building near me and the condominiums are 1 million euros. Very posh, good quality stuff. But why so expensive? Because people will pay for it, right, Paul? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly this. You know, the, the, the Algarve benefits from cooler summers and warmer winters and is being very good at promoting itself. And it's not like southern Spain. If you see the Algarve from the sea, there's still an enormous amount of green space. And it's, it's very beautiful. It's just not for me. Um, and it's got as i said it's got one business which is tourism so if you move there you have to you have to exist shoulder to shoulder with the summer the summer crush um but that's its lifeblood you know the, the summer crush you you even make that sound poetic summer crush it sounds like a cocktail <laughs> how how long's bobby off the booze then is he is he um i don't he, know and, and when i he, he rather ominously said Maybe when I said you'll be celebrating when you top out Hedda de Mayo, maybe. I mean, yeah. that's not a sort of talk I'm expecting to hear from the man, basically. Well, maybe, maybe he's given up. Yeah, I, I, I gave up when I moved here, and only I, I had to go on a two weeks of cortisone because I, I buggered my leg up on a building site, and I just never started again. I also had to look after my aging father, so I thought the last thing I need is to be half drunk oh. in the evening. <laughs> And you haven't drunk again since then? No, I just stopped. I, I, I'm an expert on um, uh, non-alcoholic beers and water. And it's funny that something just went click in my head. And I did. I was a habitual drink. I probably drink six days out of seven. Um, in the UK, I used to live next to a pub. So I was, I was uh, probably in danger of becoming one of those awful expats that I sort of... You avoid almost, now. Almost a caricature, yeah. Uh, I know I, the sort. We do, we do know the sort. Um, I, I'm thinking maybe a calendar of those characters. Of... Uh, it would be pretty easy easy to write. Yes. But I yeah. just never started again. I lost weight. My mind was clear. I had a business to set up then. I had, I had my dad's villa, villa to fin finish, and he'd been really uh, scammed over that. So I had to un unravel that plus finish the actual build. And there's a, a lot going on. I just realised... My, actually, my dad, after about four or five months, said, are you not drinking? And I said, well, no, not really. And he said, oh, fair, fair enough. Yes. Carry on, carry on. <laughs> Excellent. Do you know what? We're two minutes into Heather's time, so let's bring oh, her on. No. Screen. Well, no, no, don't go just yet, because I, I don't know if you two have met before. Let's give her a nice big round of applause and bring her onto the screen. Good morning to Good you. Good morning. Heather. Hi there. Hi. Have you been? Have you been on the screen uh, with Paul before? I don't think so. Hi, no. Paul. No, well, great. Go. Hi, good morning. So you should know each other. Paul's doing some very exciting stuff. As are you, Heather. How are you today? And where are you? Are you drinking or not drinking? That seems to be the conversation of the moment. If you don't As mind. As usual, me. I'm drinking my hot tea. So yeah. Well, yeah, uh, not wine. Not wine at this time of the day, then. No, <laughs> it's, no. It's uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a very light social drinker if that and and these days i'm not drinking because i'm working on losing weight so yeah it doesn't really tie in terribly well to that there's a lot of that going on at the moment same reason for bobby wow okay and i gave up for a year i i enjoyed that it, and it was people said it couldn't be done and, it, and i remember <laughs> jill just saying carl i'm worried about you that's not healthy giving up drinking uh, here in <laughs> it, goes, it, it goes against the culture for sure right it does. Thank Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad you got the chance to meet Heather here. Have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you again next month. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Cheers, bye. Paul. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye. And uh, we will make sure, of course, that uh, the link. Well, actually, I think the link is there in the in what's scrolling across the bottom of the screen here. Uh, rural properties, rural properties dot com, and you can sign up for. Oh, what was that that just flew past? Was that a parrot feather? Uh oh. Probably, yes. <laughs> like, like a little angelic presence on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, that just caught my eye. Yes, no, well, I had that happen not, um, a while ago, too. So, yeah. And, but, yeah, there you okay. go. My, my cleaning help is coming today. And, yeah, the bird is still sleeping. So, 
Bird is still sleeping, yeah. not a euphemism. You char with late. Darren is asking um, if you. <laughs> this is very personal. It's the first question uh, for you. This oh, morning. it is. It is. With or without so, milk? Um, my great grandmother was English. And um, yes, I learned to drink tea with milk. Uh, I'm not this morning, uh, but normally I always do. I'm just out at the moment. So uh, okay. yeah, I think tea absolutely is supposed to have milk in it. So I'm, I'm there's my you. little non-American this um, slipping in there. Very good. Did you cope well with the change to UHT milk here in Portugal? Or do you buy... I think the milk here is, is delicious. Yeah, I am. Um, I think I think the milk is really great. I love that you, it doesn't have to be refrigerated until you know you open it and it lasts forever. I mean, that's like that's worrying. It lasts for, I know, but <laughs> it lasts a really long time. And I don't know compared to the U.S., uh, that's nice because I I wouldn't drink it very fast. So yeah. There right. <laughs> well, e excellent to see you. Um, you too um, have a project or a, a listing that uh, you want to share with us this morning. I which do. is very interesting. We're going to have a catch up with you. We've got okay. God's God tip of the day to look at. We've got some of the earlier comments that we didn't manage to read earlier on. So maybe you and I can go through those together. And I'm launching, I'm looking for some beta testers, uh, Heather. Actually, I'd love to run this idea past you as well. So we've got sure. a lot to squeeze in. Uh, between now and 10 o'clock. Um, I've just started this 28-day Portuguese thing. It's a, a language and culture course. Of course, I'm not a Portuguese teacher. I do not teach Portuguese, but I do encourage people to learn. That's my part in this. And I've just launched something this very morning, which is a simple task every morning. You can find out more at goodmorningportugal.com forward slash 28 hyphen day hyphen Portuguese. And when I send you a little message, a little assignment every morning, and it will ease you with baby steps into learning more about the language and the culture. Would you like to be part of that? Sorry to doorstep I, you like this. As long as it doesn't wake me up in the morning, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's interesting. So if, I, if I were to send you a WhatsApp message at six, you wouldn't thank me for it. Six is probably early enough that okay. uh, that I would I would sleep through it if I was asleep already. I've been okay. Uh, right. I, I, there's no way it's going to be coming out at six in the morning. It'll be probably be around breakfast time, and it'll be very s simple. Like today, for example, is basically saying "Hola" or "Hola, bon dia" or "Tard, bon noite" to somebody, and okay. And that's I can it. do that. It's a simple I do task. that. Oh, you probably do that already. <laughs> exactly. And, and you know, the important thing is to reflect on that, to help others do the same, because it's it's about habits, isn't it? It's about getting into good habits and getting into trouble as well by just saying hello to somebody and seeing no, but, what uh, Have you ever – well, you you know too much Portuguese. But uh, not that there is too much to know. But <laughs> I find that I have this really weird tendency – I don't know if other expats can relate to this, but I say yes to things that I have no idea what I'm saying yes to. Yeah, I love doing that. I do, love saying that. Do you know I what do. I mean? Somebody's like, I do. And I do. It's like, yeah, yeah. And, and, and all of a sudden you're like, did I just agree to like jump off a cliff? Or like, and, and when the Portuguese person looks back at you and goes, <laughs> and, and edges their way out of the room, you know you shouldn't have said yes to that. But as a, as a foreigner, and if you're if you're a sort of of a people pleasing disposition and you're a, you're a kind of yes person as in open to life and opportunity that is what we tend to do isn't it rather than close the conversation down with a now 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 scupa and then get, leaving the room it's like see 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 and you've just no idea what you're agreeing to no idea and then i catch myself laughing like wow i have no idea what i yeah I have and no you may idea. never know you might never know that's the thing heather that well i usually hilarious. like understand the beginning of the conversation and then they just start going and yeah. then forget it so well, it's yeah. that is definitely a thing and that's something we're going to have to get to grips with on this course is how to say to people you know um, you know and just take it from there we will give you strategies for dealing with such situations and those situations will come where you don't know what you're saying yes to, and you, you've you've started the day with the best of intentions, and you said hola bon dia, and you are faced with an absolute tirade, a two minute tirade of Portuguese spoken very quickly, most of which you haven't understood. That is that is how it is here in the immersive laboratory of the Portuguese. Well, language. it's it's more it's more, you know, you say something, and then all of a sudden they just will speak English, and they 
won't speak Portuguese. So yeah, it's a whole thing for sure. There is, that's part of it as well. We will be dealing with that. Okay, so where are we going then as we are looking at this plot? Quite a lot oh, of okay. about development uh, this morning. You've got this one here. A plot well, this is a, this is a rendering. This is a house that uh, I designed um, originally thinking that I wasn't moving to Portugal anytime soon. And I was uh, trying to build a house that would work well all on one floor, which obviously this is two floor, but on one floor for main living, which it, I do have the master upstairs, the kitchen, the living room. So it takes advantage of the view. And then um, the lower level is designed with the laundry and extra bedrooms. And um, if you actually go through the pictures, you'll see the actual plot itself. But at this point, it's an urban uh, plot, so it's ready to build. Uh, this plan can be uh, drawn out further and submitted, or you can do any project you know you like. But I did think through a lot of things, uh, so I do have a good, uh, better floor plan than the architect. I think I heard I improved upon it <laughs> significantly. But this yeah. is on the in Alviazra, which is the edge uh, of. Um, it's about 20 minutes or so from Tomar and 40 minutes to Coimbra. And there, there's a, you see the view Beautiful. and uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty little plot, but it's super walkable. And uh, I, I was going to list at 35,000. Then I thought 34, then I just was like, you know what, let's just move it. So I reduced it to 29, nine and it's a great piece of land. And I bought it, um, in 2017 closed on it in, in uh, earlier mid 2018 and you know have owned it since but it's just time uh to let it go since i did buy a house and not build on land uh but what, what the big thing what, is being being urban being big thing it's not rural land it's urban it's residential there's houses around it but yet um on both sides there's nothing built and across the street, it's cork uh, trees that are protected. So it, it it's on the edge of town, but it provides quite a quite a nice little spot. And uh, that's it. Oh, it, it's wonderful. And um, for those of you who saw the house and saw the price of twenty nine thousand, um, <laughs> let's, let's, let's make it clear that this is a plot, a land plot for sale. And this is permission has been granted to build such a dwelling. On I the haven't site. submitted um, permission. Right. Uh, I haven't submitted the plan, no. So nothing is locked in, but okay. it can be submitted. And, uh, you know, that's not an issue. I don't have all the architectural drawings, but uh, someone can contact the architect if they want that plan and move forward with that. Um, and, yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a lovely little spot. And um, what it's residential, which is nice, because I, I was looking last night at, kind of the competition and around and you know it's kind of how, how long does it mixed. take sorry sorry heather how, how long does it take to walk into al well i refer to it as al viagra it is cheekily known as al viagra <laughs> by oh, i didn't know that did you not know that you might want to add, uh, no. you want to add that there's in your marketing own, right there right <laughs> well, there well it's it's literally in al viagra it's literally you can't it kind of looks far out but it's it's literally at the edge of the town but it's super it's right there there's a you know a, a bus stop and the municipal park there's a roman museum that's like kitty corner oh, kind of well, I, know and, what you mean. I know what you mean it, what a lovely town Alvarez. oh you do know that you even know where the roman museum is I, yeah i lived so, i lived in fresianda not far from uh, um okay uh, that's where these gentle well yeah that's right that's where the, the amazing austin brothers live the templar knights here they are ah. currently they're currently um What's the word for troops? Um, stationed, or they are their camp. Their current camp is in Al Viagra there, the, and we mention it. They, they talk a lot actually. When we premiere this movie on Saturday evening, they talk a lot about life in Central Portugal, and that is where they live. Um, That's great. Within walking distance, so you can find out more about the town and why those two gentlemen particularly love it there. So thank you for that. I will put the link to it um, into the chat as well, so anyone interested in that can get in touch with you directly about that. We have other questions coming in for you, and uh, we will also have a God Squad tip of the day and other 
um, matters, including the mindful um, memes from James to include as well. And more talk of your tea. That struck a note this morning. There's the link to that particular property. And uh, yeah, on the matter of tea, um, or habito de beber chai fue levado para Inglaterra por la reina Catarina de Braganza, who we have to thank for taking tea to the United Kingdom, which then, of course, uh, went to the U.S., via your grandmother, I think you said there. If a Portuguese person is staring at me, I often just say to the bang or wink at them. How does that go, Darren? What sort of trouble have you got yourself in with such a... Str <laughs> winking out there, yeah. <laughs> is, is winking good? Philomena, help us out here. Shouldn't we be winking at, at uh, Portuguese strangers? I was going to say strange Portuguese people. That's different. And winking <laughs> could probably get you into a lot of trouble there. Um, so, falo un poco portugués, mais esto aprender. Very good. This is this is the, the full um, response that you might That's want. Right. Yeah, I say esto aprender portugués, uh, poco, you know, or poquinho. And, mm. uh, and then, you know, if it's something really complicated that I, I need English for, then I'll say follow English. But you've already spoken some Portuguese, so you like soften them up with that, and that helps a lot. Um, or if possible, you know, stay in Portuguese. Very good. That's excellent, both of you, Heather and James. Well done this morning. In fact, um, you get one of these. Muito bem. Very good. Uh, <laughs> you, isn't that lovely? Pod yeah. falar mais devagar. So the pod is great. And the, the Portuguese person is like to say, pod, pod, si, si, push, push. I, uh, I, si, I haven't done the pod, the pod, pod habit. I, I do the si, si, you know. But I know pod, pod is, is much more common. But, mm. you know, but it translates to it can be. Yes. Which is, you know, uh, another way of the the version of positive for, for Portuguese. I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that little phrase, and I love to hear a pod pod coming back at me. Um, a question <laughs> for you, Heather. Bon dia, Heather, from the Jones Travelers, checking out your website now. Are you assisting expats in residence permit <laughs> renewals? You do that kind of thing, don't you? Uh, well, we we don't do renewals, but I do have a guide that I created mm. on doing renewals online. If you're able to get logged in there. Um, I do have instructions. You need to do it in Portuguese because for some reason, when you do the translated version, it doesn't work. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm trying to get my husband's done now and I haven't been able to get confirmation of his registration to log in. So, But I did do my father's uh, not long ago successfully on the online renewal. And I did mine last year when, when mine was up as well. So yes, you certainly excuse me, certainly can contact me, Heather, at bootsonthegroundpt.com, and I'll be happy to send you our guide that will step you through that. It's free for anybody out there that's looking for it. I can't guarantee it'll work, uh, and you won't have to go in person. I can't guarantee that, but it's worth a shot because it did work for my father, which his expired the uh, end of December, and then my husband's is ex coming up this summer, uh, but it's in second quarter, so in theory, it should um, be open for second quarter, in theory. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So the answer to your question there, Jones Travelers. Excellent. Thank you for that, uh, Heather. Uh, more commentary coming in from Porto at the moment. Oh, and Jackie, Carl, I'm having trouble joining your WhatsApp group. Well, that's terrible feedback. I'm so sorry uh, you're struggling there. I would love the 28-day challenge. So is it okay to PM you my number later? And maybe you could add me, please, if okay. I, it's ideally for people who are already in Portugal, but I'm going to make an exception for you, Jackie, if you think you can work around that. Of course, you're very welcome. And I think we've probably got the numbers we need because I think I only want six to 10 people. And I think we may have those. Um, just let me know if you want to join the next cohort. Um, you'd be very welcome to do so. You just drop me a line. Perfect. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, I was quite confident with my order at the restaurant. Frango, arroz, salada. The server kept trying to ask me to do English, but I just stayed in Portuguese. Holding steady and firm on the Portuguese. Love that as much as possible. Well done, uh, Darren. <laughs> Muito bem. You also get that. And uh, winking is very common in Porto. Uh, but maybe it's okay. a Porto thing. I don't get that so much in Caldash. Do you, Heather? I do know. Caldash is not a winking city that I'm aware of. So from the forthcoming <laughs> book, the winking, the great winking cities of Portugal, Porto is top currently and Caldash okay. today is bottom. It's only uh, a two yeah. 
<laughs> Only a two city survey so far. <laughs> <laughs> how is winking in your city, everybody? Let us know. I was shocked how many Portuguese shop staff wink at me. Maybe it could be something to do with Darren because he's always there when this is happening. Do you think? And just I, I just have the dirtiest mind because I always go to something dirty. Like I don't care what you say. Winking is just go. I, I don't even know how that's possible. Especially this early in the morning, and have yes, can get to right. sleep till very late. Okay, let's um, change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> no, from, wink, from winking to hump day. Scary. I know. See, hump day. Look, there we go again. It's like the theme of this show. You think it's educational? You, you know, you're gonna learn about businesses, people doing visas, helping people move. Uh, just no, it's a real yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, a God Squad tip of the day. I've just bought a new smartwatch as my old one stopped charging. It's a shame because it was simple to use. It looked like a normal watch. The new one is complicated. Yeah, that can happen. So I'm still learning to how best to use it. However, I'm hopeful that it can help me improve my fitness routine and monitor how my body responds. Yes, that greater complexity may pay off in the end. I found the most useful measure to be average sleeping heart rate. It is a proxy for your general health and is likely to show up any illness or cardiovascular issues. Very good. My HR... Is the heart rate is generally between 52 and 55 BPM. Wow, that's low. It's like a slow jazz for track, though, isn't it? It's yeah. not exactly not house music, is it? It's more like, mm, mm, yeah, that's really, uh, that's like athletic levels. Low. He is that's that's him, that's him, that's the coach. Though well, caffeine sense. or alcohol will affect it, however, if it creeps up towards 60, I know there's something that needs addressing. <laughs> Uh -huh. Chill pill is what's needed. Bon dia, Gampos. Finish Kata. Mindful moment then, uh, which we might need. It's been an excitable show so far. Just as man cannot live without dreams, he cannot live without hope. If dreams reflect the past, hope summons the future. That's a nice little uh, set of words there from Ellie Wiesel there. Uh, and, and it applies nicely to migrating. <sighs> to what? Too much? Okay, that was a big uh, spy, Heather. Yeah, too much. Yeah, well, it was Ellie Wiesel. Yeah, it was, yeah. Okay, much. all right. Uh, we're all different. So the actual number, main. Do you know Ellie? Then I've never heard of Ellie before. Uh, we're uh, all Jewish um, writer. I want to say. Okay, all right. I you won't Google me. that, but yeah. All right. uh, uh, we're all and that different. was a, you know a positive thing, but okay. it, yeah. All right, thank you. Right. We're all different. So the actual number may not be relevant but changes may be oh this is to heart rate again are you monitoring your body not right now um i i will later I <laughs> no, not at the moment <laughs> I come back to the old adage you, you can't manage what you don't measure that's going to appeal to heather's mind as well i think you can't manage what you, what you don't measure heather keep that uh, tape measure handy Bond to your James Dudubay. Don't scoop. I never quite know when you are done. Don't worry, uh, you guys here. What's going on here then? Mindful dad joke. Have you heard of Murphy's Law? You, yeah. Dad, what is it? You. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Dad, right. And I think we've lost the rest. <laughs> it was going yeah, so see, I, I, You know, I think I'm smart, but like a lot of those jokes, I just, you know, I think my mind and neurodivergent, first of all, um, or neuro spicy is my favorite term. Neuro spicy, love it. I that. know, isn't that better? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll just kind of sit there for a minute, and I'm like, maybe that's just not a good Heather joke. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. I'd know. love to hear your own brand of neuro spicy jokes. Um, have you heard of? Oh, Hitler? I don't do jokes. Okay, well, let's try this one. Gross. Okay, let's try this one. With you. <laughs> let's let's just um, see what how Heather reacts to this one. Have you heard uh -oh. of Cole's Cole's law? You know what is it, Dad? Thinly sliced cabbage. Got it. I got that one. Okay, okay, excellent. excellent. All right. Am Brilliant. I supposed to laugh? <laughs> yeah, but no, I got that one at least. I did understand okay. that one. All right. Wow. Back, gotcha. back to winking then. Viv says I did. I just winked actually, just for your benefit of your. God knows what um, might happen today. Yeah, then audience. I'm a winking person, so I could, <laughs> anyway, starting a trend says Viv. Try winking. It's fun, actually. Okay. Um, and if you're so right, says uh, Darren to the coach, so many people will say they are changing something, but don't measure it or even know how to measure it. No need to laugh. Just wink, as Heather did just there. Okay, so what else is new? What else is new on the scene, Heather? What's, what are the trends at the moment of people's interest in Portugal and how are you helping them? Well, um, we help from everything from the very, very early stage of 
I think I might want to move to Portugal or I'm interested in Portugal or just I want to come on a scouting trip and check Portugal out. So I'm doing everything from custom itineraries to um, meeting with people and doing some guides to taking them all the way through the process with visas. Uh, we do visas and uh, a, a local um, couple local folks I work with. Uh, and basically I oversee and I strategize the best way to kind of fit you into the, the Portuguese scheme these days as far as what they want to see. And we help people all the way through to getting their driver's license, which is a momentous occasion. And, um, you know, so we work with, we work with our clients for a couple of years, two to three years, basically from the very onset to completed, um, and yeah, so as far as what's on the horizon, we're, we're just plugging away and, um, you know, just seeing some different timing of things, nothing consistent yet with the AMA replacing stuff and, you know, um, the immigration authority, those sorts of things. But we did get our fastest approval yet. We got a 22 day approval out of DC. Well for done. some clients recently, and that was kind of awesome. So, yeah, yeah twenty-two days. What what's happening yeah. there? Why why is that the case? Obviously, your 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 skill and help, but what's going on in the in the context? Yeah, I mean, we we provide a beautiful package of everything, and just you know, my goal is to present something that somebody can go through in like five minutes, ten minutes tops, and they understand where the person's position is, and and you know, kind of their their whole situation. So as far as that particular client, I mean, they were in good shape and we, we showed that. And so I don't know if that has anything to do with a fast approval, but certainly all the documents, everything is there and, you know, they're not having to come back um, and ask for anything. And that's very, 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 very typical of our clients, say 99.9% .9 of the time, they're clean approvals and that's awesome. And, uh, so yeah, that's you know that's ultimately the scoop as far as that goes. But we we've started incorporating some more things, helping people do different levels of adjusting. You know, we do the expat meetup, which we have coming up on the sixteenth, um, and you can go to our Facebook page, uh, Boots on the Ground Portugal, uh, to check that out. Uh, and our expat meetup is the sixteenth in Caldish. Call the Schneider in 6 to 8 p.m. And we actually get a lot of travelers and people coming, um, scouting, or just wanting to check uh, out the expat scene, which is a great place to do that because we're very welcoming and love to get new people that are checking out what Caldish is about and not missing us. Yep, very good. And you say it so beautifully, Caldas de Reña there. Uh, boots on the ground, PT. Don't forget the PT uh, as well as the dot com there. And that is the website yeah. that you will arrive at. Um, in the last few minutes we've got left then, and I've got a little video of Evra, uh, a place that I think is wow. often overlooked and underestimated by people. Uh, we talked earlier on, Heather, with Paul about uh, mm -hmm. old, oldie developments uh, here in Portugal. We heard of some ill-fated ones that haven't done terribly well and how there was a bit of a rush in previous decades. Do you see that as, as, a, as an interesting development here in Portugal, people retiring and needing more intensive um, additional support? Yeah, in, definitely. In you know, uh, my, my, I brought my elderly parents here, as you know, and uh, uh, my father moved to assisted living after we lost my mom, unfortunately, in 22. And uh, so he's almost been there a year. June will be... Wow. Uh, I think June or July we moved him. It'll be a year. Yeah, it's, I'm surprised the last year has kind of flown by. But um, but yeah, I definitely see that there's more needs uh, for seniors, just like there is in the U.S. And it's just so much more affordable here. And um, you know, so I feel like that's a big big thing. And it's one of the things I consult because I do custom consulting with people, and because I've been through a lot. Uh, medically with my parents and so forth, as well as finding my dad a home and all of those things. It's, it's just one of those topics that, that, uh, that I have a lot to say about that can be helpful. Uh, as far as care goes, there's more caregivers, there's more availability that that's, you know, starting to come this way, but certainly as the population ages, 
we're going to need more people in that industry um, mm. and more homes, hopefully more more uh, assisted livings or those sort of properties start cropping up. Um, but in Caldish, there is a great home. It's nine minutes from my house. I live in the country, 10 minutes from the fruit market. And so my dad's nine minutes away, which is really great and pretty handy. So yeah, hopefully not not all a scam for sure. Okay, um, very good. So if somebody does want to talk to you about that and, and, and discover more about the availability and, and the prospect of aging, I mean, not just retirement, but older age here in Portugal, you could, you could assist with that and consult on that too? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm 51 myself and as young as that is, it's also not that young. And so I definitely have thought very seriously about, you know, can I live in this home? Can I age in place? what's my situation like be smart about your investment and think about that and that's why that that property that i designed in alviazra or whatever the heck you call it um you know was designed really to be able to enter ground level and uh live on one floor and um of course there's stairs or you can you know get down if you want the lower level but you don't have to i have everything on that main floor. And that's just something I think of, you know, my background's real estate for 30 years in Arizona as a broker. And so uh, I, I just think that way. I'm kind of um, young, but old minded in a way. <laughs> Thinking about that, I, I think it's part of your neuro spiciness, perhaps. Isn't yes, it? there you go. Just the way your the way your mind works, fantastic. Sorry, I'm keeping you unnecessarily for a bit longer here because this is a very interesting conversation to be having. Oh, so sorry. Hey, no, no, not at all. My my bad. You know, in, in keeping you waiting, um, because I'm sure you've got other things to do today. But this the whole idea of aging in Portugal mm -hmm. and and the possibility of as well as boots on the ground, Portugal. It could be um, Zimmer frames on the ground. PT.com as well. As a, as a future <laughs> offshoot for, for people who want to do that sort of service. And another question for you is coming. I think it was uh, Doug who, do you remember before? It's Barbie Dog Lady. I think that's Doug, oh, Doug using a separate name. And then he's got a question for you. Dear Heather, help us poor Greenhorns escape the scammers. Greenhorn being somebody new to Portugal, presumably, got an 187 euro penalty for a non-payment of a Christmas via ver toll, even though I have a link transponder, a nice little learner. What would you do about that? Can you can you advocate? Something doesn't add up with that. Um, when, you know, I rented a car and when I've been here and I didn't have a transponder and they managed to find me in the US, I didn't have fees like that. So I don't know what, you know, Doug is doing there to cause um, that level of penalty alone. Something is not adding up. That's what right. I would say. Or Snoop Doug, as we call him uh, these days. Okay, <laughs> thank you for the question, Snoop Doug. Um, and a little bit more from Liz in Paris, I think. I came in at the end of the tail end of the pod pod conversation, so this might be wildly off subject. We do wildly off subject, especially when Heather's here, or just repetitive. But if someone answers pod pod, it means yes, yes, you can, yes, you can. And strangely, if you only saw one pod, it feels a bit curt, so it sounds more polite to repeat it. Pod, pod, obrigado. Uh, that's perfect. Um, and yes, I'll put the link for the WhatsApp group. Try that for those people who have who are complaining already about the in, in, unavailability of my WhatsApp group. We'll get you in. Don't worry, we'll do that. Heather, wonderful fun as ever to talk to you. We'll see you again soon, right? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you Take very care. much. Have a day. Let's go to Evra to finish the show today. And thank you very much for this. Uh, Anna, the Sweden Portugal. Cheers. Thank you, Heather. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Oh, no. Bye. That's not ciao, the ciao. He's on the phone. He's with us tomorrow. I'm just run, trying to find you some applause. There you are, Heather. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs> so it's good morning from Evra, where I arrived yesterday. It's a super nice crisp morning. I'm sure this will be a wonderful day. The sun is on its way up. All you can hear is the birds and a bit of traffic. And later on today, I will visit the cathedral. The view from my hotel and my room. Not a bad view, eh? So enjoy your day. Ciao, ciao.